It's been a tough 2020 Overwatch League season for the Toronto Defiant. It all came to an end this past weekend against the LA Gladiators, where we came close in a best of three series, all the way to a game five. So for this final Karku's reviews for the season, let's take a look at all the major fights in all five games. On Elios map one, Toronto has control. Time is winding down. They're almost at 90% capture point. Toronto then initiates with the Nano on Farah with the Mercy Pocket. For those who don't know, a direct rocket deals 120 damage and with the Nano boost, it is up to 180. And with the Mercy damage boost on top of that, it gets bumped to over 200. The perfect amount to one shot a, well, 200 HP target. Zik misses the direct rocket, but hits a close enough one, which would normally splash about 80 damage, but with all the damage boosted modifiers, Shaz took a huge amount on the first hit, which was subsequently followed with the second rocket for the kill. Nevix dives on top of the lighthouse, and Logix hits a ton of gladiators with the EMP. Nevix was using his D.Va boosters the exact moment the EMP went off, booping space down into the agility's hook into the D-mech, an eventual kill by the team. With such a strong start to that team fight, the rest of the gladiators go down one by one. Nevix bursting down Mirror, helping on Kevster, and Toronto takes map one. The barrage just to peel them away. Another D mech here onto space, but he does get the self destruct off, but unfortunately fell in the fight, which means he won't be getting the re mech. OG cannot really even touch onto this point, and Agility's just so strong, able to just get this foothold on the point, and this looks like it could be it, it is. The Toronto Defiant taking map number one. Now moving on to map number two, Hollywood. Toronto needs to win this upcoming fight as time is winding down for their attack. Logix is set up on the far door. Kariva is solo pushing the cart while the rest of Toronto is establishing control of spacing. Cruz and Zeke are high in the sky. Nevix and Agilities are checking the right side door, but as soon as they realize that the Gladiators were gonna push out the far door where Logix is camping out, OG fireballs out immediately on Hammond without any response from Toronto. He sneaks all the way around into the back of the payload and jumps on Kareev with the help of Kevster, who actually managed to sneak out on the right door as well after Nevix and Agilities left it to check the left. Logix was camping behind the door to pressure the first person to come out who was Space, took a pulse bomb and was immediately killed. However, Birdring was able to send out his Bob, making this a 7 versus 6 since Bob is like an extra hero. The 7th hero rips Nevix apart as he goes down soon after. Cruz looks for an opportunity to res Kareev after dying early as we saw, manages to heal Zeke with a good ground nade, and gives Zeke the nano. Zeke kills off Shaz and does his best to land direct shots into Birdring, who coach guns to dodge one, and then Zek says, oh shoot, just gotta barrage this guy now, but space who died super early, was able to walk all the way back and matrix the entire ultimate, and inadvertently also matrix Kareev shots as well, who was trying to pocket the barrage. Tough, tough, tough fight for Toronto, but the Gladiators win map two. The defense matrix able to keep him healed up and healthy, and the Toronto Defiant collapsing, crumbling. No one will stand up to the might of the Gladiators as they will be walking away with map number two in this series. We head on over to map number 3, Temple of Anubis, 1-1 one, one tie. Toronto already has two ticks on attack and is looking to finish capturing point B. Logic snuck into the back of the point as Sombra and is looking to open up the fight by hacking space. However, this was very unfortunate timing by Agilities who hooks him first, because now the hack gets cancelled as it breaks line of sight due to the pillar. Without the hack, Space is free to fly away and uses Matrix to stay alive for a long time, buying time for the Gladiators and forcing Zeke away from the Gladiators' backline and onto him to finish him off. While this was happening, OG was trying to flank Kareev on Roadhog, but Kareev's spidey senses were tingling as he manages to sleep him and finish him off with the help of Nevix. Things were looking good, being up two kills early, but on 2CP you need to secure these kills fast because the defenders can respawn and return to the fight very quickly. Vigu stalls a bit by flying in and out as Mercy, and Zeke attempts to jump in for a barrage into the Gladiator's backline. However, like I said, too much time has elapsed now, and Space is already back into the fight as D.Va, and manages to matrix a ton of the damage, and Shaz finishes off Zeke. Agilities jumped onto the point and put in a ton of work, helping to DMX space and help kill OG, who came back as well with the help of Logix's EMP. 
Toronto has to work overtime, no pun intended, and kill these gladiator tanks again after killing them early in the fight because of this respawn advantage. However, with all the attention on the gladiator tanks, Kevster on the tracer was able to run freely in the Defiance backline, harassing Cruz so much that he couldn't res Zeke and eventually killing him. After that, he goes for Kareev and kills him as well. Shaz was able to free shoot after using his transcendence because of no supports on the Defiant side and the gladiators hang on for map number three. Shaz has to get a kill, he finds one, the Discord Orb supports him and Kev's the finds it, pushing them off the point. What a great clutch from the gladiators, spawn advantage of course in their favor and... Now it's winner go home, map number four, the Defiant are down in the series and need to fend off the gladiators from capturing the third point of Dorado. Let's do a quick defending position check. The snipers, Kariv on the Ana and Logics on the Widow, are up top here watching either side of the main entrance. Zeke and Cruz on Pharmacy in the air, spamming main entrance and watching left side entrance. And Nevix, being the sentry off on the side, is making sure no one sneaks around in the back. However, Birdring does just that, sneaking his way behind Nevix, who was unfortunately turned the other way at the perfect moment. But wait, he's coughing from the Venom Mine. Let's rewind. Logix, who was set up close a few moments ago earlier, threw down the Venom Mine and Birdring did not see it while he was trying to sneak behind. At this point, Birdring is already committed, there's nowhere to run, so he just coach guns it to the Defiant backline and Logix is there ready to duel him. Unfortunately, Logix loses the duel, but Nevix responded immediately after hearing the callout from his team and launches his bomb to the point right after. This kills Kevster, who was trying to touch the payload to ensure the Gladiators stay in overtime. Now what transpired elsewhere while this was happening? Agilities threw down his whole hog and kept three gladiators stuck at the main entrance which also forced out Shaz's transcendence. Zeke was patient and waited for it to end and dropped down for an immediate barrage to finish off Shaz. With the gladiators losing a few members early on and overtime winding down, Toronto just has to clean up the rest of the gladiators off of those initial picks and forces a map 5. Bionate of Kariv. So many picks going their way, the Toronto Defiant inches away from victory so close from continuing this series now only a few players remaining og desperately trying to cling on to whatever he can with the primal rage but he is melted in an instant and this series josh will be going to distance the toronto defiant are gonna be getting their win and taking it to map five and this is it map five and we're on lijiang tower gardens this was a tough ending, and as much as I'd love to show a winning team fight from us, I gotta give credit to how the Gladiators ended our season here. The Glads already had control of the point with time winding down, so they knew that Toronto is gonna have to speed boost their way to touch the point. They set their defensive positions up close to instantly evaporate any Defiant members if they came through this way, but the Defiant instead head towards the bridge. Kevster actually found Zeke's translocator early, and as soon as he destroyed it, the Gladiators initiated quickly. Kevster hacks Nevix and Shaz opens up with the Coalescence. The Defiant are forced to speed past the bridge away from that defensive trap set up on the other side, but remember how Zeke's translocator was found earlier? He decides to throw it in this room as soon as the cooldown came back up. But that's also where Kevster previously set up his translocator, and he teleports back here and starts a duel against Zeke. Toronto is preoccupied, running away from the Glads and going to point, and Shaz catches up with his coalescence, burning through some of Zeke's HP and assisting Kevster in finishing him off. This spells trouble for the Defiant, like I said, they were so preoccupied and lost Zeke early, which gave Birdring the opportunity to teleport in, and well, let's just have the casters call the end of this one. They've got to try and turn up, and look at this! Gladiators finding the opening pick, Birdring rolling through them with the Death Blossom, two kills! And that should do it, ladies and gentlemen, the Los Angeles Gladiators. The Defiant made it hard for them, but they will be victorious. GG's in the chat, and they will move forward in the tournament. The Toronto Defiant going to be going home. This will be where their 2020 season ends. And that's it for this week. That's the final one for 2020. Be sure to subscribe to the channel up here and watch the other episodes of the series down here. And make sure to keep tweeting at the Toronto Defiant replay codes, your in-game name, and your rank, because we'll be doing Karki's Reviews Fan Edition all of the off-season bi-weekly.